The Tesla Autopilot software is undergoing a fundamental rewrite, which Elon calls a quantum leap in improvement. That's a big leap. And it was just released to a small group of beta testers and hopefully I will get it soon. But Elon also said that it's kind of hard for people to judge the progress of Autopilot. Well, that's exactly what this video is for. My Tesla Model 3 has the full self-driving option along with the latest full self-driving computer, also known as Hardware 3. So far, I've driven over 64,000 miles and I'd guess at least half of those miles were driven by autopilot. Now, Elon said that he drives the bleeding edge alpha build of the latest autopilot software in his personal Tesla with almost zero interventions between home and work. Well, I don't know what Elon's commute looks like, but I have a 40 mile trip from home to work and we're going to see how Tesla Autopilot performs on this route before the new software rewrite. Then we'll come back at a future date after I get the new software and do the same exact drive to see how it's improved. So make sure you subscribe if you want to see that video, hopefully in the near future. Now for now, let's hit the road. So the first few minutes of my drive are through city streets in this current state of autopilot before the big rewrite. It doesn't really drive itself on city streets. You know, it still requires you to tap the accelerator to proceed through a green light. It recognizes lights. It knows if it's a, if a green or yellow or red, and it will come to a stop if it's red, but you have to tap on the accelerator for it to proceed through a green light. Uh, and it also doesn't do turns by itself. That's gonna be an interesting thing to look at as far as the rewrite goes and see how much that part has improved because really that's the biggest part that it's lacking right now. So the first few minutes of my drive, I of course am driving manually uh, without autopilot on just so I can get to the freeway. Now, once I'm on the highway, that's when I enable autopilot and that's when it drives the majority of the time. So right now we're merging onto the highway. Once I'm on the highway, I'm just going to tap down twice to enable autopilot and now autopilot is enabled throughout this whole entire video if you don't know the blue icon here on the screen when that is blue that means autopilot is in control of the car i always like to leave just one hand on the wheel on either side this stretch of the road for about 15 miles it's going to be uh, through stoplights so i'll show you how it kind of acts with stoplights this isn't actually a freeway so right here you can see on the screen it says stopping for traffic control in 600 feet the light is green so I have to tap on the accelerator to let it know to proceed through the green light. It will automatically come to a stop no matter what the light is, if it's green, yellow, or red. If you have it enabled traffic light and stop sign control, so you can turn that off. When that's off, it'll actually, it won't stop at all. So that's another thing for us to watch out for um, in the next video after the rewrite. We're gonna see how it goes through stoplights and see if that's any different at all. Now here you can see it's stopping for traffic control, 500 feet, 400 feet. The light is red, so that's good. It's doing what it's supposed to do. It's stopping at a red light. And then once it turns green, I'll have to tap the accelerator to proceed through. But with the new software rewrite of Autopilot, it's gonna be sort of like a 4D visualization using all the camera feeds around the car. So the neural network is going to be a lot better using building its map of what it's trying to see because it's going to use the 4D visualization using all the cameras and it's basically mimicking LiDAR without actually having LiDAR. And it's supposed to be just a whole lot better at recognizing the environment around it and, and knowing what to do at s s intersections. Intersections is gonna be a big thing, city driving. City driving is the next big step for autopilot. And of course I have the full self-driving option. So if you have that or enhanced autopilot, anything above just the regular basic autopilot, you can just tap on the turn signal and it will change lanes for you automatically. The autopilot just hit the brake. I don't know if you noticed that. Really, probably the biggest complaint right now for most people driving on autopilot or full self-driving, phantom braking. Autopilot seems to struggle as far as this current state of it right now before the rewrite. It'll brake for no reason. There will be nothing in the road, nothing in the way, and it will just slam on the brakes. When you're looking at it from a safety perspective, that's better than not braking. So it's better to have phantom braking for things that aren't there than to not brake for things that are there. So I understand why Tesla chose to go that route and they're taking the safer side of things, which absolutely I think they should. This is self-driving we're talking about, autonomous driving, safety first. We want to minimize the number of accidents involved with autopilot. So phantom braking, of course, is one of the biggest complaints and hopefully that gets addressed in the full rewrite of autopilot. If you saw on the screen there just a second ago, it reduced my speed. So why did it do that? Well, earlier on in the drive, it was a double lane highway. There was a divider. So it allowed me to go more than five miles over the speed limit. I was going 65 
in a 55. There are, is no longer a divider on this highway. As soon as that happens, what that does, autopilot limits you to five miles an hour over. So it reduced my speed to 60 miles an hour and I can't go faster than that. It says auto steer speed restricted to 60 miles an hour. Now you are able to go faster than that on traffic aware cruise control. So if I were to disable autopilot, I could go on traffic aware cruise control, which is like smart cruise control, and it would let me go as fast as I wanted to. But of course, auto steer would be disabled. So that is the key difference. If you want to auto, if you want to have auto steer and not worry about the steering, you have to enable autopilot, but then you'll have to deal with going the lower speeds or actually going the uh, speed limit. So right here, it detected another traffic sign. I had to hit the accelerated pedal to let it know, hey, it's green, proceed through. In my settings here, my speed limit is set to five miles an hour relative over the speed limit. So whatever the speed limit is, autopilot will go five miles over that. If you're on cruise control, if you set that to 10 and you enable cruise control, it'll automatically go 10 miles over whatever speed limit you're in, which is pretty cool. So I leave that on five. And now this is just easy peasy cakewalk for autopilot. This road right here, I've driven this so many times, just hundreds of times and autopilot handles it perfectly. And there's really not much else to say. I can sit here and as long as I have a hand on the wheel, the car will continue and drive, stay in the lane, and I don't have to worry about anything. And that's why Autopilot is such a big draw to Tesla. And this is where Autopilot shines. I mean, it's just going, uh, there's a person walking in the street right now. And it was so far out that it didn't really matter. But if, it, if she would have been closer, if she probably wouldn't have been in the lane next to us, Autopilot may have stopped. I kind of wish she was walking a little closer just so we could have had that for the test for science. But yeah, there are so many things that happen on a drive that as human drivers, we're kind of by nature expecting something to happen, having our peripherals engaged and like, oh, I, I know there's a truck coming up behind me right now. And so does autopilot. It shows it right there on the screen. So this, you know, it just recognized the speed limit sign right there. And now we're lowering the speed down to 55 because now it can read speed limit signs. Uh, in the latest update, it actually uses the camera to detect what the speed limit sign says. We're gonna go through a few more stop trips. That person does not have autopilot on. It's going way too fast and way too loud to be a Tesla. We're gonna go through a few more traffic lights here and then we'll end up on the highway where the speed limit is actually not limited on the highway. When you are actually on a freeway uh, that is 65 or over, I believe, you can go pretty much whatever speed you want. And so far on this drive for the past 15 miles almost, ever since we've merged onto the highway, Autopilot's been in control. I haven't had to take over the car and I might take my hand off the wheel just for, for a little bit. I'll show you kind of what that does if you take your hand off the wheel. Here it goes. It's asked, asked me to apply slight force to the steering wheel and I just did. So I've kind of always described Tesla Autopilot as a 16 year old driver or maybe like a 15 year old driver that's learning to drive. Like they know like what to do. It's just unpredictable at times. But just like with a 15 year old or 16 year old driver, the more it drives, the more it learns, the better it gets. And that's why I try to ena enable Autopilot as much as possible whenever I drive, uh, just so I can feed that data back into the neural network because that's what it's all about, right? It's about the neural network getting smarter, getting more data from millions of miles from all the Tesla owners from across the world. And speaking of neural networks, if you're not sure how a neural network works, you should check out today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is a website and app that helps you become smarter about a wide variety of topics in the math and science fields from things like algebra to probability all the way to quantitative finance. It's my go-to resource for learning more about how specific technology works. Their unique approach to active problem solving helps you quickly understand fundamental concepts through their courses, practice sections, and daily problems. I just finished the Introduction to Neural Networks course where I learned more about how artificial neural networks detect patterns in huge amounts of information to learn themselves. Now, much like a human brain, neural networks are data processing machines that make predictions and decisions, and the best ones can even outperform humans at certain tasks, like hopefully driving. If you're interested in learning more about what makes autonomous driving possible, go to brilliant.org slash Andy Sly to sign up for free. Also, the first 200 people will get 20% off their annual premium membership. So click the link below to get started today. Now back to this drive here. Uh, so we are coming up to the final stoplight before we get onto the highway. So far, autopilot's been in control. Haven't had to take over with 
full self-driving, I have navigate on autopilot. So navigate on autopilot is a feature where as long as you have a destination entered into the screen, it's going to merge onto highways by itself and take exits by itself. Okay, well, so here we go, hold on. Bam, a car just turned into my lane, right? You can see autopilot hit the brakes pretty hard. They hit the brakes and allowed us not to have a collision. Good job. The only thing with that is sometimes autopilot will brake even after the car has disappeared from the lane. It wants to be overly cautious, overly careful. Okay, and that's good. Let's go back to navigate on autopilot. So as long as we have destination entered into the screen here, it's going to take exits right here. For example, check it out. I need to take this exit right here. Look at that. It didn't take the exit at all. I wonder if it was because I'm not actually on a freeway. I was actually merging onto a freeway from a normal road. That's really weird how, it, so that, there you go. That's a perfectly good example of like, I have navigate on autopilot enabled. It should have, it should have turned on my turn signal by itself because it does that. We'll, we'll show you that. I'll show you that in just a few minutes. It's going to do it. It should have turned its turn signal on by itself. It was in the correct lane. It just did not take that. So now let's put this back on. Okay. If I was in the very far right lane back there, it would have definitely taken the exit because it would have been forced to. But I was in a lane that actually split off and it, and it wanted to stay in the left when it should have known that my route was to the right. So that's just weird. I, I, I'm glad that happened though because I want to see if Autopilot actually, um, the new software rewrite actually fixes that. I want to see if that behaves differently. So yeah, we're probably going to fast forward for the next five miles unless something happens. Now I'm only going to track it until I get off my exit off the freeway because by the time I get off the exit on my freeway, I know I'm gonna have to manually take over because it's not gonna turn by itself. It's not gonna take right turns or left turns or anything like that or go through stop signs. So we'll see how many times I'll have to take over manually. Hopefully I don't see myself taking over anytime again on this drive. Let's see if I'm right. So now it's getting, this is what it should have done back there. Now it's merging and it got into the proper lane. And that's the thing about autopilot. It always does things cautiously and to make sure that it follows your route. Those are its priorities. First, it wants to stay safe. Second, it wants to make sure it stays on the route. So it's been controlled this whole time. It took the exit, merged back onto the freeway. So yeah, I mean, uh, lane changes are buttery smooth. And so far, there really hasn't been any phantom braking. Here's a, so a semi-truck just cut in front of me, basically. Did you see how it reacted? I mean, it's like, it knows when to stop. <laughs> yeah, so far, Tesla Autopilot has been braking as it should when people get in front of it. It's been changing lanes as it should. It's been doing it very smoothly. Um, and this is every day for me. You know, this is, this is five times a week. And I've been doing this for two and a half years. So I've given a lot of miles to Tesla Autopilot. I am honestly super impressed by the way Autopilot works and how it has improved so far. So we got an exit in two, over two miles and, it, and it's already wanting to change lanes. I understand that because it doesn't want to risk missing the exit. That's the only, that's one thing I would want to change about Autopilot is I wish it would have just stayed in the, in the left lane so I could go past all these people because I was going 70 and now I'm going 57. Did it automatic lane change by itself? No problem. It didn't cut anybody off. That's another thing with Tesla's, you gotta watch it to make sure that it doesn't cut people off. Sometimes they would like to do that. But luckily, you know, right now, there's not really heavy traffic. In Louisville, where I live, this is called Spaghetti Junction because there's circles and there's a lot of places to get off and a lot of exits and it's all happening really fast. So let's see how Tesla handles this. It needs to be in a one particular lane. The good thing is it's in the right lane right now. <laughs> I was kind of tempted to just get in this left lane and see if it would be able to successfully get back into the correct lane. Kind of want to do that right now, actually. I'm getting in the wrong lane. Let's see if it goes back into the right lane. Yep, okay. That was just a, a test and it passed. So it, it immediately, as soon as I got into the left lane, it turned the turn signal right back to the, to the right and went back into the correct lane. So that's good. So it's been in control ever since we enabled it back there when we merged onto that freeway after the failed merge. So I've only taken over once so far. And the only other times that I had to do something is going through traffic lights. When it was green, I had to 
tap the accelerator to let it know to proceed through the green light. Now, I don't think that will change in the rewrite. There is a car coming up pretty fast and Tesla got into this hit the lane. Almost kind of made them pump the brakes. It's not my fault, these people are flying. I could beat you. We are basically through. We have half a mile left. It's going to take one last exit here. We'll make sure that it does that correctly, which I assume it will. And uh, if it does, then we only had to take over once so far on this 40 minute drive, 45 minute drive, which is really good. Uh, and it also serves as a good comparison test for when the rewrite comes out. So when I have the new autopilot software rewrite, and when I have it installed, I'm going to do a similar video like this so we can test it out and you can see the differences and we can talk about how it's improved. And you heard that sound, that means autopilot has finished its drive and now I have to take over and manually drive. So there you go, I hope you enjoyed this Tesla Model 3 Autopilot right along before the big software rewrite. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the after video to see all the improvements that the new software has in store. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. My name is Andy. I'll talk to you in the next one.